I'm going to be, we're going to be talking to you about uh, how we use Next to work in all the dozens of development environments we have to set up and deal with. And uh, my name is Charles Fulton. I'm the manager of web development at Lafayette College. And we also have about a dozen WordPress environments because we need to consolidate and do some house cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, normally I start with a quick demo, but we've got a lot to go through today. We're going to get to some more demos in a bit. And we're not going to also moving back and forth. The demos is kind of hard. So let's, I like to lead with the demo because it gets people interested, but we're going to, we're going to skip that right now. That's just a teaser. All right. What is Nix? Uh, it's a language, like a programming language. Um, it's also a, a package manager. Um, it's a bunch of your software already packaged for that package manager. It's an operating system. It's got a branding problem. OK. Um, we're not going to talk about the operating system or the language in detail today. You'll see examples of the language, but we won't talk about that. This is not a, a training session for Nix. We say all this just to emphasize that the complexity is significant. It befuddles us, too. We will give you as many nouns as possible so that you have a fighting chance if you try to do this. <laughs> yep. Um, what does it get you? Holding it might be better. OK, thank you. Um, so in the context of what we're going to what we're going to talk about today, uh, what does it get you? It gets you consistent, reproducible, virtual, virtually indefinitely uh, environment specifications versioned alongside your code. Immediate and automatic update of colleagues, new and existing environments without interfering with any other project they have going on. Automatically identical environments on dev, test, prod, wherever you want to put it, um, or, or just dev, um, that is specified in code instead of as a series of steps, maybe in your readme or worse, a Docker file. And so you're getting identical everywhere you set it up and run it instead of basically the same, air quotes. I'm using the air quotes here. And extremely fast switching between project environments. What does it get rid of or replace in this context? No containers, no Docker. So everything runs at native speed on, on Windows, Mac OS, with your local tools, without monkeying around with file system shims or VM building or any other slowdowns or barriers that are associated with all those ecosystems. Gets rid of uh, RBM. I would say, uh, so I came to Nix last year when Jason gave this a version of this talk at uh, National High Ed Web, and I just sat. I was in the back of the room. I started playing with it, and I saw, oh, this can this gives me compiled PHP of varying versions on my Mac without all the linking dependencies and other problems I had with PHP Brew and Homebrew and whatever have you. Oh no, it actually just worked the first time. I was sold from that point on. He could have told me anything. <laughs> Um, makes tools like Homebrew less necessary uh, or avoidable. Uh, this isn't to say that the package in Nix packages is necessarily as recent or it's available in Homebrew or Nix packages. Sometimes you have to go over a Homebrew to get something, uh, but it can it can uh, replace most of that. So when I say Nix packages, Nix packages is a program written in Nix that has uh, over eighty thousand. Uh, software packages that can be installed using the Next Package Manager. Um, it also is the implementation of Next OS, which is that operating system. It's a Linux distribution that we're not going to talk about today. All right, so um, let's dig into like a little bit of background before we get into the fun demo amazingness that Charles is going to show you. Um, when you do a next build of a package. Um, it, it reads a Nix program, what it calls an expression, evaluates it to determine what it's being built. Um, during that evaluation, determines exactly the build inputs um, required to build that thing. So like PHP isn't just PHP, it's built with OpenSSL and dozens of other open source libraries. And you wanna have a different version of one of those libraries for your need. And you know, if you were to build with a slightly different version of OpenSSL, even if you're not changing the PHP version, is that a different PHP? Yes, it's a different, it might be 831, PHP or PHP, but it's A31 built with OpenSSL. Insert a number here. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. 
Um, Nix will then uh, build or fetch from cash um, all the various needed inputs uh, and then build or fetch put, fetch from the cash um, uh, final derivation. The cash could be uh, the Nix ecosystems standard cash out there, or it could be a local binary cash. By local, I mean like one that you operate for your organization. Um, it then uh, produces uh, several artifacts that go into uh, this thing called the Nix store, which is uh, on your computer at slash Nix slash store. And it's a very, it's a flat directory with thousands or tens of thousands of other files and directories in them. It all begin with a hash. And so um, you look through that and you'll see there are all different things related to Node.js and uh, in there. Um, this is another set of uh, files in that store. Notice that these are kind of all the same names. There's a bunch of repeated names of files in here, but with different hashes. These are air quotes, the same thing you're building, but had different build inputs. And so it hashes to something else. You know, So for instance, if you're building PHP with a different version of OpenSSL, that would be the same version of PHP, except it's different because it's got different inputs. And so it's going to get a different output hash. Uh, the next store is local. It's the thing that goes on your computer or your server or wherever. Uh, by the way, this runs on uh, Mac OS and Linux and uh, runs pretty well on uh, Windows service subsystem for Linux on uh, on Windows. Um, there's a binary cache of all those derivations and outputs up in the cloud somewhere. Um, they automatically pop populate it. Every time a new version of Nix packages, that was that GitHub repo I showed you that I said it was a very giant Nix program. Every time somebody pushes a new commit to that, Hydra goes through and rebuilds all 80,000 of those. Most of them won't have changed with each commit, but if somebody bumped that version of OpenSSL for PHP, it'll now rebuild a whole set of PHP for that dependency on that version of OpenSSL. Um, it computes the hash. Maybe it's already been built up there. If it's not been built, it will actually download all the dependencies to your computer to build them and, and build them, which can take a while. So hopefully it's already been built. Or you've got a CI for your custom stuff and it's pushing it up to your binary cache that has all this stuff already built. But if not, it'll build locally. You know, you might have to wait a day if you're building something like Node.js. You can open oh, binary cache. So I'm gonna show you, um, yeah, I really wanna to get to trials of stuff. So maybe I won't show it to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> wow, I've gone through a whole lot of deep stuff in like eight minutes. So um, I had to build a QR code today to put on the last slide. And you know, because I'm a uh, paranoid person, I'm like, I'm not gonna to go to qrcodegenerator.com and do it because they're gonna steal my URL and publish it or something, I, I don't know. I want to do all this local because I'm a nerd, but you know what? I don't want to go like install a piece of software. So what I did was I ran that, waited a hot second. Okay, dash it. Oh, great. Thank you. Um, see if I change new share to that. I thought I was sharing my whole screen, but apparently not. Is this better? Apologies for these challenges. Better? Okay. Okay, so what I did, what was that? Charles, could you hold the mic for me so I can have two hands on the keyboard? Sure thing. So, I started on my command prompt and I was like, I went to, I went to uh, search.nixos.org, look for a Nix package that made QR codes, found QR code because it said it was a small QR tool. Okay. Went over here, typed Nix shell dash P QR code. It chugged for a quick second, opened a new, pro a new, um, a new version of, uh, of bash with in my path, uh, 
that program. You know, there's that hash thing in there. It downloaded it into the next store for me and automatically set up my path. So I type that, it gives me a QR code. I cut and paste that into my, uh, into my presentation, which you'll see later. And then I exit out of the shell and I don't have the software on my computer anymore. It's done. I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not installing stuff. I'm not uninstalling stuff. It's all transparent. It manages all that for me. Magic. Um, so now we're going to show you a next expression that um, uh, represents one of these local development environments that we're talking about. Okay. Um, and there's a lot of syntax in here that we're not going to worry about right now. Um, and uh, so you'll see in a minute that I can just, I can add a couple things in there to give me what I need. Um, so when you use what's called a flake index, which we're not going to get in, into that, what, what that is, it has a lock file that's like many other locking systems, like uh, Composer has a lock file, NPM has a lock file. It's like that, so you can lock the version of these programs that come down. Because normally what you do when you, when you make these Nix programs is you say, I want to use Nix OS 24.05 as my base uh, from, from up on, on GitHub. But you know what? That updates every every few days when somebody pushes another another commit and they merge it into into that that release branch. Um, I could pin to run exact version of Nix packages by putting a commit hash into into my file here, um, or I can just say I'm not really worried about that much precision. I want to lock to whatever's at 24:05 today is good enough for me, and that's locked permanently into the lock file until I decide to go to update it later. Uh, that'll work in in perpetuity. It records that 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 commit hash. Uh, of Nix packages for itself. And again, if you're, you know, if you're accustomed to maybe trying to manage environments between developers with say an NVMRC file or whatever, whatever the version is for PHP brew, do you can specify, okay, use this version of node, but you have less control over if the constraint is just saying node 20, you don't have that same control over, well, actually you know this point version or built with these options. So there's a higher, there's more granular control and um yeah and you can actually since the lock file is based on how it was built for that version of nix there's a much higher chance that if two people are working on a project they're working with the same local environment would you mind holding the microphone for me when i'm on the when i'm on the keyboard i need a third hand so <laughs> so um over here we see this uh, this flake, which is a Nix program, and I specify in my environment I want Node.js 20, uh, PNPM, and a, a configuration option uh, processing language called DAL. And then I come over here to the command prompt. I've CD to the directory. I type Nix develop. It's going to chug for a hot second. It's going to get what it needs, um, and I'm in the environment. So node is 2015.1. Um, but there's no PHP here. You know, let's say I, may, I want to add PHP to this project. Come over here, add PHP and PH and Composer. Get out of that shell. There's something else I want to show you called uh, Durenv, or we might not get to it, that makes that a lot faster. So now um, what I might do is commit this change to this flake on a branch and push that branch up to GitHub. And then all members of my team now get PHP 8.3, the exact version that I, that I installed here um, on their environment when they switch to this branch. Uh, here's a picture of what the lock file looks like. This is, uh, that's that hash in there for that version of the um, Nix packages uh, at the, at the uh, git ref nixos 
24.05, which is the one that came out a few months ago. Um, this is the demo that I just did, um, where we decided we wanted to add a PHP and Composer to this environment. Now it's just there. It's there when I'm in the shell. It's not there when I'm not in the shell. And everybody else on my team gets the exact same version of everything. So I just went into a, a Durev managed one. Do you see how fast that was? That's because Durev caches some of the stuff that was being computed when I did Nix develop. So Durev is a program that allows you to um, to say, I want these environment variables configured when I CD into this directory. And so all of my projects use Durev. And so when I move from this project to that project to that project on my command prompt, it's just the correct paths to all the correct versions of whatever tools I'm using are immediately available. By the way, there's VS Code plugins for this that'll read that stuff. And so it gets the correct path to the correct version of whatever tooling you're using inside VS Code for all of its plugins. And then I, oh, let's see, it was actually that WP Campus. So now you can see I have that env there and I change out of it and now it's gone. I don't have, I'm not gonna bother doing the which PHP, but PHP is now gone out of my environment right there. Um, gonna see inside your path, echo path. And you can see that it added PHP with extensions, 839, Node.js, 20, 15, 1, PNPM, whatever. So it just sets up your path with all these things in it and gets rid of all the stuff you don't want out of your path. It has a mode where you can say, I only want the stuff I specify. And then you don't get things like LS and cat. But you know, I also have you know user bin at the end of mine too. So it's not what's called a pure environment. There's still extra stuff there. Um, but I personally don't install PHP and Node.js and all that stuff on in user bin, because I know I can get it using this tool. Um, aha, here's the fun part. Uh, that's just the software. I could have put MySQL in there. I could put PHP FPM in there, Nginx, whatever I wanted to, but it's just the software there. It's not configured. You know, you got to go in and do all that configuration for you, right? Ah, Charles is going to school you on an easier way. Okay. And, uh, we should, no, no, this is, oh, there is a slide here. Uh, yes, actually, you're right. Okay. All right. So, and I will again freely cop that the first time I saw Nick's demonstrated and then started digging into it, I was like, the syntax is challenging. I am at sea. But then eventually some things became clear. And for a while, I was just using it um, kind of the simple case to eliminate having those different version managers like RBMV and NVM and PHP brew and just eliminating that and just doing more consistent package management. And that worked out pretty well. But I did ultimately want to be able to run a local WordPress development environment this way, especially with the um, uh, the WP local Docker environment that TenUp makes being sunsetted, which is kind of what my go-to had been. So the solution here is something called dev ENV. Not to be confused with dir env. Nouns are a challenge. So dev env, it's a mixture of Nix and Rust, but it is mostly Nix under the hood and the syntax is similar. But it has concepts of things like, essentially it has these abstract con um, concepts of languages and processes and services. Put another way, you can have a configuration file where you say, I'd like to have uh, PHP at this version of these extensions. I'd like to have an FPM pool configured this way. I'd like to have my SQL with these default settings. And I'd like to have Nginx with these settings. And then you just run one command and everything is up and you're off to the races and it's all nixed under the hood with no containers. So um, Jason, if you want to hold the mic for the next 20 minutes. Yes, um, yes, 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 Charles, I would love to. I'm going to stop sharing mine. Okay. 
Okay, so I should do the whole screen. I found the whole screen is better. Yeah. My phone wasn't big enough. Bigger? Is this good? Do we need to a little more? I would, I'm sorry, can I do what? Oh, probably. Okay, so the way, no. Sorry, the way we uh, set up our projects at Lafayette is uh, we use the we use a composer based approach to pull our themes and plugins together and build one big install package. And then that's um, eventually rolled up into Docker containers and deployed to AWS. But so that's so we keys. We have a single project repository for every platform that we deploy. And I'd say the layout is fairly typical. Um, inside public is where things install, but you know, core WordPress packages, but that's not versioned. Um, we also have the infrastructure's code config because we use CDK for deploying to AWS. And then uh, we also, as of not that long ago, have this devenv.nix file, which defines the local development configuration. And so let's uh, take a look at that file. Okay. Um, is this big enough? Is everybody seeing the VS Code window? It is not big enough. Okay. Okay. All right. Um... We'll have these files available for you later, so don't be uh, writing down what you see here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> there will be a test on this. Um, all right. So the first thing, the first thing I would just note is packages. Um, unlike say the thing Jason was showing you earlier, where like all the packages we needed are were um defined there. Here, this is really just packages that don't necessarily belong to some other thing we're doing. Like PHP is not here because PHP is configured later. Um, but WPCLI, that's something that's available and that's something that we want. So for configuring the PHP language, and there is actually good documentation about all the available configuration options, which I deeply appreciated. Um, in this case, uh, our um, custom theme has a YAML dependency. It's amazing how many Docker containers don't come with a PHP YAML extension by default. Um, so that's something that we add. Also, because we're using MailPit just for local mail testing, we throw in a little bit of PHP configuration, you know, just use this, use this email path instead, just so we can catch the mail for testing. Um, we configure a, a PHP FPM pool, since we'll be using Nginx as our web server. Configure JavaScript, we want node 20. We want yarn because we use yarn instead of npm. Then uh, come to services, which uh, the concept speaks for itself. The first service we're configuring here is MySQL and can specify an initial database with a name and a super secure password. Um, then um, Nginx, same deal. Um, I. I've collapsed the Nginx config for readability. Um, I'll expand it briefly and you'll see why I collapsed it. It, 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 it. Nginx takes a little work to mimic the um, mod rewrite functionality of Apache, but it's there's nothing unusual here except for in some cases, you know, just there's specific syntax for referring back to other things that you have configured in this file. So telling it, like, hey, this is where you will find the FPM socket that was defined earlier. Uh, mail pit, much more straightforward. It's just, yes, turn it on. Thank you. Um, 
And then also um, just, I tend to put things like this um, just when I start my shell, just to confirm to me, yes, I have the version of PHP I expected. Yes, I have the version of Node I expected. It's just kind of a sanity check. So there's two commands that are kind of relevant. Um, one, I'm good. one is dev env shell, which is basically what Jason was demonstrating earlier. And so that's going to do the thing. It's going to assemble all the packages I defined, make sure everything's installed. Okay, I have a shell. I have PHP 8.1. I have Node. Great. And I say, okay, fine. Where's WordPress? So that would be dev env up. Okay, so what you get is a nice little text-based in, um, interface here that you can actually just click around in. Um, hmm, excuse me, I have a dead process from a previous test. So how about that local sports team? You know, I usually use that line in places that don't have local sports teams. This is a major city, so. Go O's. Okay. So you can see here, mail pit is up, my SQL is up. Uh, you can actually scroll, which I just did not expect with a text-based interface. Um, that was like, I mean, this is a small thing, and but I was like, awesome. And meanwhile, um, on localhost, uh, I have the famous um, five-minute uh, WordPress install. So right now, Charles is demonstrating like a clean install. There's no reason you couldn't have a script that downloads your, um, you know, content or database content or whatever uh, from a production environment here. The nice thing about DevEnv and Nix is that now you have a known standard environment. So writing shell scripts that expect, you know, Bash to exist or other programs to exist, you know they're going to exist. So you can put them there and tell people to use them. Uh, whereas like if you had like a giant list of, you um, uh steps to follow they're probably going to forget one of those and not have the shell script or not not have this program that your shell script depends on and then they run it and it blows up and they go what isn't this work and so uh, other things i appreciate about being able to do it this way um you know if i need to add plugins Yeah, so if I need to add plugins, um, the local directory is just right here. There's no abstraction about recompiling the container or wondering if I have this volume mounted or that volume mounted. Uh, the same thing with any um, any files that I might be uploading. I mean, it's just going to be right there on the local disk, um, just in the expected path. Um, if I need to interact with the database, it's just running right there in the local host with credentials that are known to me. There's just a certain simplicity to the whole thing. And then when I'm done with it, um, I can just do a control C here, trigger a quit. And most of the time, all the processes come down cleanly. And if they don't, well, it's just a process that's running on your laptop and the process can be killed. 
Um, I haven't. Next steps for filling of this would probably be um, some kind of way to, you know, properly fake a. HTTPS locally, or maybe run things under different names in case I wanted in different ports. If I maybe wanted to run two environments simultaneously, I mean that's that's a use case that can happen, but it's frankly it's not one that I was, was well supported for me before, so it's not a it's not a huge concern going forward. Um, WP WPCLI works the way you would expect it to. Uh, Oh, what? Why did that not work? Yes, because I'm not actually in my session. So, excuse me. So, builds the shell, gives me all my stuff, and this time. I think we should ask any questions now. We have, yes. a, we have a takeaways slide at the end. Um, I think we have last slide left, um, which I'm happy to put up. But you know, we talked a lot about a whole bunch of stuff. So, any questions now before we get to the takeaways? That is an excellent question. The question was, so how do I actually get devenv? And if we covered it, we didn't, we'll just only go back to it. A devenv.sh. And it's a, well, here, we, we have a working web browser. Um, okay. So here's the website. Um, there's a get started link. This get started link is not a lie. These steps actually work. Um, they will probably work the first time. Uh, to add to add to that a little bit, um, you would first install Nix, and we're going to have a link to the place that we recommend how to install Nix. And then um, you can you can do what Charles said, come here and install DevM globally. Globally, but you could also rig up your 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 file that that we were showing you to install it for you for this in this in this uh, in this context of this developer shell. So you could encode that in there. You don't even have to then follow this if you don't want to. Sure. Um, so I will repeat the question for um, our home audience. Um, Carrie's uh, expressing that, you know, this sounds a whole lot like, okay, the first step is you install NPM, and then you install this, and then you install this, and then you install this. How does what we've just described differ than, than doing that? And I saw Charles has a good answer, or an answer. I don't want to represent... Uh, no, it's a very fair question. Um, and just answering from personal experience, I think um, number one, uh, this it's particularly useful in a multi-developer environment because instead of telling someone, um, okay, yeah, so go get homebrew on your laptop and here's a list of packages to install and you should be able to run the thing after you've done all that. Um, instead, it can be okay. So, so long as you're, in, as long as you have Nix and DevEnv installed, just these two things installed, you can clone this project from, you know, the um, from our internal GitHub or whatever. You can clone this project. You can run DevEnv um, up, and it's going to pull all the packages down, compile what it needs to compile. But that's really it. Um, so there are far fewer steps, and I think there's a higher degree of confidence that all the different developers who are working for this project are going to have the right environment. And if they don't, then that might point to some flaw in how the project's being built or distributed. Um, and then also just, I mean, I'd mentioned this before, but um, 
I have personally gone into some very bad places with versions of PHP and homebrew to the point. And look, I love homebrew for like many other things, but PHP and open SSL linking is not one of them. It's a mess. It's a nightmare. And I don't live in that nightmare anymore. So that's another reason. That's a great answer. Uh, what I would add is that now it's a computer following all those steps. Um, and in this environment, instead of saying install node or node 20, your, your Nix program and its lock files is saying install this exact version of node built with this exact set of dependencies. You're going to get the exact same thing as everybody else on your team or in your CI environment or in production, if you want to go that far. I know a lot of people host with like, you know, pro hosting services and so maybe that doesn't apply. Um, but the, the precision of being absolutely certain, asterisk, unless something breaks, <laughs> um, which by the way, I've experienced very little in the year and a half to two years that I've been using this for lots of different uh, language projects. Um, you have a very high level of confidence that everybody in your team gets the same thing on that branch that you're working on. All right. So I think if I understand the question, the question is um, you have, say you're working on, say, a WordPress plugin in one directory, you need to test it in a different, and you need to test it in the project directory. Um, I hadn't thought of using Nix to address that because my workflow has always been, even if I was basically going up and going right back down, I would push the branch and then reference the branch in my composer.json and bring it in that way. Uh, oh, so yeah, let me show you. So, um, so this is the, okay. So this is the composer.json for our, um, this is the library site. Um, so most things coming from W packagist, which is an awesome place, but then, uh, we also run our own private, um, composer repository using status. And that's just for all the things that we don't publish the outside where they're just internal. They're not privileged exactly. And okay. There isn't actually a live example, which is good, but, um, you can just reference a branch, you know, just being like dev dash, whatever the name of the branch is, and bring it in that way. And so that's, that's how I tackle that personally. Um, great answer. Definitely side of WordPress and PHP that I don't know a lot about. Um, what I'll add to that is, is that, um, it's just setting, it's just setting paths in your shell. And so with the Duran thing, you know, when I seed it out, it went away, that worked for my style, but with the dev shell, it just sets them and you can CD around wherever, and you can reference, you know, files wherever you want, you can move around. It'll still be in your path in the context of that shell. So however you want to do it. And I would just add on the path logic stuff because that's, you know, that's how, um, you know, PHP brew or MVMRC goes about its business, but it also protects you against the, I updated to the new version of OS X and the default version of PHP or node has changed. And I didn't notice, and I have now committed an incompatible set of packages. I see some nodding. Good. I'm not the only one. Which brings me to a, um, a downside of this approach. Um, stuff doesn't change until you tell it to, which is probably going to irritate the security people in the room. Not that that's a bad thing. I mean, I'm of the opinion that it, you should be paying attention to all that stuff and updating when new stuff is available. Um, a lot of times it's easier just to let somebody else handle that for you. Um, with a lot of these approaches, you have to make that a little bit more manual because we've explicitly decided we don't want stuff to change until we say it's ready to go to change. So now you have to do that.
Wow. Uh, uh, the question was, how would you grade the learning curve for Nix? Uh, I would grade the learning curve on Nix in general, just Nix in general, as punishing, um, syntactically obtuse. However, I would grade the learning curve on Dev ENV, um, so long as you're not doing anything particularly unusual, which you're probably not, I would say the learning curve is not serious. Because again, there's good documentation, um, there's good examples about how to do fairly normal things like setting up PHP or MySQL or JavaScript or any of those things. But no, I, I would say that I'm, Jason can attest to occasional DMs from me to the effect of, I'm sorry, this ought to be easy. What is even going on? But that again, that was before um, I discovered, we discovered the Dev EMV project, which abstracts away a lot of the, so in the, in the Nix community, they call it an opinionated um project because it just it makes a lot of choices for you and those choices are helpful yeah and again for what what i'm using it for with wordpress what jason's using it for and what we think would be useful to the people in this room the learning curve is not going to be steep Yes. So the question was, is DevM more or less philosophically a similar abstraction layer over Nix and Nix packages? as um, say Lando or DDEV is over Docker, Docker Compose. And my opinion, yes. I don't think it, I don't think it is necessarily trying to solve exactly the same problem, but yeah, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of similarities there. Um, and similarly in like Lando, at least, which I've used, I haven't used DDEV, um, you can dig under the hood when you want to. Uh, same thing with something like Durant or DevEnv and, uh, and the underlying next stuff. I think it's time to put up the uh, the final slide. Unshare. Now I'm going to share. So yeah, we already kind of talked about this. Super useful, high learning curve. Um, there's lots of good docs. This thing has been around. The, the, uh, the dissertation that this came from is 20 years old. Um, so this thing has been around for a very long time. It's started to get a lot of traction in the last few years. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, the, the Nix ecosystem has evolved over in that time. And so when you start Googling, like how to do this in Nix, you're going to get five different things that are right, depending on exactly which feature set you're using. And that's part of why the learning curve is so high. Cause you're like, you start down a path and you're like, wait, how does this have anything to do with that thing over there? And it turns out it didn't. That's how they used to do it five years ago. And it still works because they're great with backwards compatibility, but there's this new way to do things over here. You know, just like in any of the languages and tools we use. You know, if you're steeped in the ecosystem of PHP, are we still writing PHP 4 code? Okay, well, some of us are. Um, <laughs> um, if you want to learn more, um, start with zero to nix.com. Um, fantastic resource, uh, very approachable. Um, and us, we'll try to answer as many questions as we can. Definitely not an expert. Um, and we're, of course, going to share the code that we've uh, used today. That's it. That's the end of the Prizo. That's my QR code that I made with, uh, with that software today. <laughs>